Hi, I'm Melissa Morris, and we're here at the 2022 Howard Hughes College of Engineering Senior Design Competition. Here we have senior students who are showcasing what they've worked on for the past year. They have lots of different projects that are aimed at solving real-world problems. Good morning, my name is Jack Levitt, and this is our Residential Combined Heat and Power System. Did you know that even solar panels in February, when it's 65 degrees outside, they overheat to roughly 125 degrees, almost 35 degrees above their rated temperature. This causes the solar panel to reduce efficiency by about 4.5%, and this is in February. Imagine what it's like in August. My neighbors have a solar panel set up on the rooftop rated for 9 kilowatts, and in August they were seeing roughly 10% of that power they should have been generating. Yeah, 90, they saw 90% loss. What we aim to do here is cool our solar panels using a closed-loop cooling system with a heat exchanger attached to the back of the panel and a heat exchanger on the bottom that transfers the heat from our solar panel into a pool or a water heater. This raises the lifespan of the solar panel, increases its efficiency, and makes sure each person gets the full use out of their valuable investment on the roof. So here we have, we have a self-cooling steering wheel for our senior design project. I'm Logan, this is Andrew, this is Justin, and this is Ryan. So what we have here is, because you know it gets really hot in Las Vegas in the summertime, 110, 115 degrees outside. In your car, it's 20 degrees more, 130, 135 degrees. So with that into consideration, you can imagine how uncomfortably hot your steering wheel gets to the touch. So keeping that in mind, we wanted to do a, a project where we reverse the cooling process and make a self-cooling steering wheel. There are already heated steering wheels, but what about self-cooling steering wheels? So we took the consideration of implementing a liquid cooling system. What it does is it connects to a radiator, which is right now it's sitting in an ice bath, but in realistic terms, this will be cooled by the AC system of the car. So it would be provided by the OEM manufacturing. A manufacturing company would take this on, implement, of course, this into a reality situation, into a car with the AC system, radiator, um, liquid cooling would be an option, of course. Um, it would cool down the steering wheel until the temperature is about an average of 70 to 75 degrees in a matter of one to two minutes. At around 287,000 fires um, occur every single year, and uh, that's uh, responsible for over 600 fatalities as well as billions and billions of dollars worth of damage. And uh, generally, there is a lot of preventative solutions for these fires, but no defensive solutions. And that's what the car fire suppression system is made for. So what we got here is we have the car fire suppression system which incorporates a microcontroller sort of brain function where what it's doing is it's uh, combining the data from three sensors. If two of those three sensors detect a fire, uh, depending on the values we choose, it will turn on a pump. That pump will um, release concentrate, foam concentrate over this fire um, and that will eradicate it. So as you see right here, the sensors are pretty small. So this system is scalable from either like a Mini Cooper up to a Semi. Uh, the big, the thing that takes about the biggest space would be uh, the scepter tank, which right now we're using a five to six gallon tank. But in a Semi, you of course would need more because it is a bigger truck. But from here, uh, it is very small and it doesn't require a lot of space. Hello there, my name is Guillermo Guevara. This is my partner Chen Hung Lin. So our product, our project here is the Easy Door Project. Uh, our goal was to basically make a door system that is much more easy and affordable for the average consumer because they are so darn expensive out there. And right now our current input of method is this phone right here. So as you can see, I press the open button, it unlocks the deadbolt, and it opens the door. And it stops. Then we press the M2 button, close the door. Now it's not going to work because we're having issues with our encoder right about now. Okay, never mind, it works just fine. <laughs> but that's our project. We open and close doors for a much cheaper price. Welcome to 